Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the official SAT study guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 316, uh, 313 and 314. Let's begin, shall we? On page 313, on rather on page 300 and yes, page 313, there are two problems that you can see there. I hope the book is in front of you. It's always a good idea to have the book in front of you. On page number 313, there are two problems. Problem number Problem number 35 and problem number 36. Problem number 35, problem number 35 was done yesterday. Was done yesterday and day number 29. So if you're looking for the solution to that problem, just watch yesterday's video and I hope you go in proper sequence. Don't skip them, don't go all over the place, just just go methodically, go systematically. And you'll find that in yesterday's thing. Let's do problem number 36. Before we dive into the problem number 36, before we dive into it, we need to understand some basic concept of geometry which will come in handy in order for us to be able to solve this problem. So let's take a look at something. Here we have a triangle, a right angle triangle, let's just call it ABC. This is angle X and just, just give them dimensions. How about 3, 4, 5? A simple a very simple, very straightforward 3, 4, 5 triangle. How much is sine of x degrees? This is x degrees here. What, what is the sine of it? But well, sine is opposite. Opposite this thing is this one. It's opposite over the hypotenuse. What if we were to ask us, what if somebody were to ask us what is the cosine of 90 minus x degrees? Well, if this is 90 degrees and this is x degrees, then this angle, angle B, angle B, has to be 90 minus x degrees. Now what is the cosine of it? But it turns out that the, in cosine we need to do adjustment over the hypotenuse. So it turns out that the side that is adjacent to angle B, 90 minus x that is, the side that is adjacent, which is this side, is the exact same side that was the opposite of this, side, this angle, angle x. In other words, the cosine of 90 minus x is also 4, minus, 4 over 5, adjustment over hypotenuse. So what we conclude here is that the sine of x, sine of x has to equal cosine of 90 minus x degrees. That is a very that is a very important identity. You must know we must know this thing for the exam. Otherwise, otherwise we cannot solve this next problem. Now let's take a look at the problem as it is given to us. It says in triangle RST. Let's draw the triangle RST. R S T. We are told that this is a right angle and we are told that this is 5 and this is 12. The fact that we are told the dimensions of this side and that side, they want us to waste our time to figure out the third side, which I hope is not a too much waste of time for you because I hope you are able to see that it's, it is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. If you wanted to, you could put 13 here, but you will see in a second that we have actually no use for this information. The dimensions are given there, we're not going to actually use them. We could if you wanted, but we're not going to use them. It's easier to just not to do without it. So it goes on to tell us, it goes on to tell us that in this triangle, triangle RST, in triangle RST, point W lies somewhere on RT on RT so where does it lie? anywhere, anywhere you like it lies somewhere on R, you just pick anywhere, it makes no difference how about here? there you go okay. and now this is what they want us to answer this is Cosine, cosine of triangle, cosine of angle R as W minus 
the sine of angle WST. Let's see what we can, let's see what we can do. RSW. RSW. Let's give it a name. Let's call it x degrees. Again, the exact same thing that is going to happen, what that happened a little while ago. If this is x degrees and the angle RST is 90 degree angle, if this is 90 degree angle and we just call this angle x, then this remaining portion, this remaining part would have to be 90 minus x. Okay, we'll come to that in a second. So, cosine of RSW, 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 that's cosine of x. This is cosine of x degrees minus the sine of angle WST. W S T right here. W S T. This this here. W S T. We're looking at this 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 angle right here. 90 minus x. Sine of 90 minus x degree. So we just saw a little while ago that this quantity is equal to this quantity. Cosine of x is equal to 90 of x minus... Cosine of x is equal to sine of 90 minus x or if you like the sine of x is equal to cosine of 90 minus x. They're complementary uh, angles. The sine of one is equal to the complementary angle of the co cosine of the other. That's all it is. Since they're equal to each other, since they're equal to each other, this quantity minus that quantity is just going to be a big fat zero. It's just going to be a big fat zero. So answer to this problem, number 36 is zero. And that's all there is. Let's do number 37, shall we? And of course, if you knew this concept already, and if you were able to see that that's the concept we need to apply here, this problem was a cinch, there's nothing in it. They're simply, they simply asking us to find the difference of the two quantities that happen to be, that happen to be equal to each other. Well, then the difference is zero then. Number 37. In number 37, here we have the minutes. Uh, how are many have lapsed since the uh, since the patient was given the injection? I hope that the book is in front of you because you have to read the problem yourself. So the patient is given some injection of penicillin, and this shows us the number of minutes after the injection was given: five, ten, fifteen, and twenty. And this is the amount of drug that is left in patient's bloodstream, measured in terms of milligram per milliliter. Pay attention that, that this is this is per one milliliter. Okay, because in the in the problem itself they're going to ask us something else. And these are the figures. Let's see what the question is asking. The question is asking how many more milligram of drug is present in 10 milliliter drawn at 5 minutes versus 8 milliliter drawn at 10 minutes. Question is asking how many more milligram of drug is present in 10 milliliter of, 10 milliliter of blood that is drawn from the blood from the patient at the interval of five minutes after having been given the injection versus eight milliliter of blood that is drawn from the patient 10 minutes after the injection. We're just looking at the difference of two quantities. The only thing we need to pay attention to, as I already told you before, is the fact that here we're dealing with 10 milliliter, this is given per 1 milliliter. These figures are per 1 milliliter. And here we have 8 milliliter. As long as we pay attention to that, we are fine. So, at 5 minutes, at 5 minutes, patient has 152 milligram per milliliter, per 1 milliliter. 152. But 
but when, but we're not drawing one we're not drawing one milliliter of blood from the patient we are drawing 10 milliliter so it's 10 times the amount minus here at 10 minutes he has 118 milligram of drug per milliliter and we are drawing 8 milliliters so 8 times the amount 8 is a 64 4 carry 6 6 and 8, 8 and 6 is 14 4 carry 1 and 9 there you go this is 900, 944 this is simply 152 times 10 is just 1520 minus 944 and whatever that happens to be that's our answer so, so this is going to be 6 11 minus 4 is 7 and 14 minus 9 is going to be 5 there you go answer to this problem is 576 and that's all there is that's all there is let's do the next one shall we in the next problem In the next problem, number 38, the last one, they tell us that this data that we see here, these figures that we see here, are based on this model. Two hundred times B raised to T over five, where P represents the amount of penicillin that is present in patient's bloodstream. T represents the number of minutes after the injection was given, and this is the model. The question simply is, what's the value of B to the nearest tenth? You're not looking for the exact value of B, just the nearest tenth. Let's, let's find out, shall we? So in a situation like this, when the data is given to us in the form of a table or a chart, uh, or, or graph for that matter and then we're given an equation which it tells us that this thing that you're looking at this data or this graph that you're looking at is comes from this particular model and what's the value of k or what's the value of this coefficient or what's the value of this exponent it's always a good idea when you when you try to estimate this thing it's always a good idea not to look at the extreme the starting point it's just not a good idea I try to avoid them stay somewhere in the middle area it's, it's safer for example, for example here, if we were to start at zero, what would, ha what would happen if we were to start at zero? At zero minutes, we have 200 milligram. 200 milligram has to equal 200 times B raised to T over 5, but T is zero. Zero over 5, or well, zero over 5 is just zero. Zero over 5 is just zero. And any number raised to zero is just one. There you go. We end up with identity. It doesn't get us anywhere. The B drops out. It does not. It's not going to do anything. Which is better than what what happens ordinarily. Ordinarily, you get some estimate which are off. Here, at least, we got lucky that the B dropped out. Let's look at five, if you like. I pref I like five. I find I find it tempting because the math is going to be very simple. It's just five over five is just one, and it's one fifty two. 152, 152, which I'm going to, which I'm going to pretend is 150. We're going to pretend that this is about 150. It will make the math easier. B raised to 5 over 5, which is just 1. So B is simply 150 over 100, over over 200. Divide top and bottom by 2, we get 75 over 100. 75 over 100 is 0.75 and since they are asking us to the nearest tenth the rule is that the, the rule is that if it is five if it is five or more if it's five or more we have to round it up so when you round it up it becomes 0.8 voila if you like we can do one more let's do one more see what we get this time Let's do 10. So instead of 5, we're going to have 10. And at 10 minutes, we have 118. 118, which I'm going to pretend is 120. Because it makes the math easier, as always. 
So 120, there we go. And 10, to, 10 over 5 is B squared. So B squared would equal 120 over 200. 120 over 200, which is 0 0.6, which I'm going to pretend, which we're going to pretend is 0 0.64. Why 64? Because otherwise, you see, otherwise what's going to happen is that B is equal to square root of 0 0.6. And I don't know what the square root of 0 0.6 is, but I do know what the square root of 0.64 is. So then approximately. The square root of 0.64, well it's just it's just 8 times 8 is 64. And therefore 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 is 0 0.64. The square root of 64 is 0 0.8. There you go. B is equal to approximately 0 0.8. Just like what we found before. And that's where we use 10. Let's use 15 if you like. Let's see what we get. You can use 15 if you want. At 15, of course in the exam I'm not going to sit there and do every one of them. You understand? I'm just doing it for you guys so that you can see and learn. 15 is 93. Again, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be a little bit gutsy. I'm not going to use 93. I'm going to pretend it is 100. Because 93 will make the math very ugly and I don't have a calculator. But you do. So you, you do whatever you like. So 0.8 is what we found the last two times. So if we put 15 in here, at 15 we have 93 which we are approximating as 100. One. So that makes it very easy. Which means B, 15 divided by 5 is 3. Which means BQ is equal to half. Which means B is equal to cube root of half. Now I don't I do not know what cube root of half is and I don't have I, I I'm not about to sit there and do it by hand because it will take forever. But what I what we can do, what we can do is that before, see this is by using 15. This is this is using the value of 15. What we can do is that before in the first two instances we found that it the B we B we claim was approximately 0.8. And I can very quickly show you that cube root cube of 0.8 a uh, cube of point 0.8 is indeed half because cube root of half we are claiming what we are claiming what we are claiming is that this is point 0.8 but since we cannot go from here to here since we cannot make the journey from here to here I can because I don't have a calculator I'm going to make my journey from here to here I'm going to show you that 8 over 10 which is point 0.8 times point 0.8 times point 0.8 is indeed approximately half I'm going to show you on the top here okay but I don't want to erase this model here because we're going to need it. Or can we do it? Let's do it right here. Let's do it right here. So 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 8 is 64. 64 times 8. 64 times 8 is 32. 3. 6 8 is 48. 48 plus 3 is 51. There you go. It's this amount, this quantity that you see there is 512 over 1000. Uh, what we, which is which is which is 0 0.512, which, which is 0 0.512, and what we're claiming is that this quantity is approximately 0 0.5. And no reasonable person will tell you that that is being insane. That's a reasonable assertion. Yeah, that's a reasonable assertion to say that 0 0.512 is approximately 0 0.5. It's approximately half. You see, it checks out. Just out of curiosity, I'm just curious, even though I want to be done with the video, but I'm curious what would we get if we were to try the last one. Let's do it very quickly, last one. 20, 20, at 20 minutes we have 74. So at 20 minutes, so now we have t is equal to 20. 20 over 5, which gives us 4. And at that point we have 74. And again, 74 makes the, makes the math ugly. I'm just going to use 75. Let's just see what happens, shall we? So we are done with all of this. It should of course give us 0.8 obviously. So 70 so b raised to 4 is equal to 75 over 75 over 200, 
Watch what happens, okay? Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 7 has 3 twos. After we, 3 twos are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes here and becomes 15. And 15 has, I'm going to pretend it is 16, just to keep it simple. It's 36. Voila. So, I, it says, it says 74. I, I pretended that it was 75 because I thought it was going to make math easier. But during the course of the work, I realized that it's actually easier to pretend that the 74 is 76. Let's pretend 74 is 76. And you'll see the reason in a second. So 76 over 200 is 36 over 100, which is 0.36. B raised to 4. If B raised to 4 is 0.36, which means that, that implies that B squared has to be 0.6. Because 0.6 times 0.6 is 0.36. And now that implies that B has to equal to the square root of 0.6. We are exactly where we were in our journey some time ago. And uh, at this point, we're going to say that B, therefore, is approximately equal to 0.64 instead of 0.6. And square root of 0.64 is 0.8. We, kept, we keep going back to point 0.8, probably because that is the value of B. I'll see you tomorrow, and we'll start a new exam at that point. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, you can send me an email at kishwaniprep at iCloud.com. Alright? Bye now.